Good evening. Uh, in the name of Allah, the gracious, the ever merciful, I would like to welcome you all, um, highly esteemed guests, to tonight's Ramadan, um, Ramadan Iftar. To begin our event, I would like to invite Mr. Hamid Raja for recitation of the Holy Quran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyuhallazina amanu Qutiba alaykum usiyam Qutiba alaykum usiyam Kama qutiba alalazina min qablikum لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Translation I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the accursed. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. O ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may become righteous. Auz billahi min ash-shaytani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah the gracious the merciful your excellency respected guests friends brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum may peace and blessings of allah be upon you all i would like to thank all of you our respected guests for accepting our invitation to attend today's Ramadan Iftar. During this very blessed month, the month of Muslim fasting. We are truly grateful that you have enlightened this event with your presence. To strive for peace is a noble ambition and is something that the world has always stood in great need of. If we look at the situation of the world today, we realize that now, more than ever, it is a pressing and urgent need of the time for us to seek and pursue peace and harmony in the world. Peace is one of the most cherished fruit of life. Peace is key to success, prosperity and sustainability. However, there are multiple factors which are contributing to increased disorder. One of the main barriers in establishing peace is the lack of understanding, lack of education, and lack of awareness, lack of dialogue, and moreover, the fear of the unknown. Tonight's gathering will also become a real means of building bridges and knowing each other further. Tonight I would like to very briefly say a few things about the objectives of fasting during Ramadan. The command to fast, whatever its details, is to be found in most religions in one form or another. In fact, fasting is a form of devotion and self-discipline which has a natural appeal to man. The Holy Quran states, O ye who believe, Fasting is prescribed for you during a fixed number of days as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may safeguard yourself against every kind of ill and become righteous so that you may become righteous. The phrase that you may become righteous explains the deep philosophy underlying the commandment relating to fasting. The fundamental objective and philosophy of fasting has been stated in this verse as the attainment of taqwa, meaning piety and righteousness. What does taqwa or righteousness truly mean? 
Taqwa or righteousness is derived from Arabic word ittika, meaning he guarded or shielded him against evil, or he guarded himself against something. In religious language, the word means to guard oneself against sins or harmful things, or to take God as a shield for protection against sins. Ubay bin Kaab, a distinguished companion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, rightly explains taqwa by liking mutki, meaning the righteous person, to a man who walks through thorny bushes taking every possible care that his clothes are not caught in and torn by the branches. The example of taqwa or righteousness is like as someone walks through bushes taking care of his clothes. Similarly, there are so many evils around us and Satan is always at a vantage point to divert people from the right path. So a true believer must remain steadfast and keep himself composed and let not worldly evils harm his good nature and spirituality. And that is taqwa, that is righteousness. And that is the fundamental principle, fundamental objective of Islamic fasting. An Arab poet has also explained very rightly the word taqwa, righteousness. And I would like to present the translation. He says, avoid all sins, both small and great. That is taqwa, that is righteousness. And act like one who walks through a land full of thorny bushes, cautious of all things that one sees. Do not think lightly of small sins, for even big mountains are made up of tiny pebbles. So, a mutki, a righteous person, therefore, is one who is ever on his guard against sins and takes guard for his shield or shelter. In the Holy Quran, God Almighty guides believers to furnish themselves with righteousness. It says, and furnish yourself with necessary provisions, and surely the best provision is righteousness. The promised Messiah al-Islam, the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, explains that in the Holy Quran, more emphasis has been led on virtue and righteousness than on any other commandment. The reason for this is that righteousness bestows the strength to resist all vice and urges progress towards all good. Righteousness is in all circumstances a charm that guarantees security and is a citadel for safeguarding against all harm. A righteous person can avoid many vain and harmful contentions that often lead other people to ruin. He further says that there are many elements in righteousness. It is righteousness to avoid pride and self-esteem and to refrain from unlawful acquisition and ill manners. I mean, a well-mannered person, a well-mannered believer, according to the philosophy of the Holy Quran, is a righteous person because manners and etiquettes, they count a lot according to the Islamic teachings. And a person, whether he's highly qualified, he's he has all the provisions, but he does not know the basic manners. So he's, according to the Holy Quran, he's not up to the mark of as a believer. So a believer must be very well-mannered and uh, must show kindness, respect, and brotherhood to all the people. He further states that blessed is the one who adopts righteousness in a time of success and prosperity and most unfortunate is one who does not turn to righteousness after stumbling. Furthermore, in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty explains the attributes of the righteous people and says, righteous people are those who believe in the unseen and observe prayer 
and spend out of what we have provided for them and who believe in that which has been revealed to thee and that which was revealed before thee and they have firm faith in what is yet to come the holy quran further states and we one and we with one another in asking for forgiveness from your lord and for a and for a paradise whose price is the heavens and the earth prepared for the god fearing and righteous people righteous people are those who spend in prosperity and adversity so one of the qualities of righteous people is that they spend their wealth for the needy for the poor and unfortunate people of this planet so giving and spending in the cause of allah the almighty is also one attribute of the righteous people righteous people are those who spend in prosperity and adversity and those who suppress anger and pardon men and allah loves those who do good and those who when they commit a bad deed or wrong themselves remember allah and implore forgiveness for their sins and who can forgive sins except allah and they do not persist knowingly in what they have done so this is brief explanation and it makes abundantly clear the profound wisdom and philosophy of the islamic fasting how beautifully god has in a nutshell summed up the objectives of the fasting in one single word taqwa righteousness the observance of the fast is obligatory upon every adult muslim during the month of ramadan the ninth month in the lunar calendar in islam as the lunar calendar is shorter by about 11 days than the solar year ramadan rotates through the year and seasons arriving 11 days earlier every year fasting in islam begins everywhere at the first appearance of dawn and ends with sunset during this period one is expected to abstain from all food and drink completely it is not just physical hunger and thirst that constitute the muslim fast but the recitation of the holy quran understanding the commandments of god almighty and making those commandments part of everyday life serving mankind giving charities helping those in need being punctual in five daily prayers waking up many hours before dawn for the individual prayers and the remembrance of god the almighty and thus spending a greater part of the night in spiritual exercises make up the very essence of islamic fasting the day following the last day of ramadan it is observed as the festival of the termination of the fast called eid ul fitr meaning the now the ramadan is ending and now there is time for the festival again the festive character of the occasion is proclaimed through exchange of visits feeding the poor visiting the sick and glorification of allah and celebrating his praise in thankfulness to him for the guidance provided by him particularly with regard to all that pertains to the observance of the fast and for having enabled those upon whom the fast was obligatory to observe in appropriate manner now let me present to you very briefly some benefits of fasting fasting is an excellent religious discipline which trains the mind and body to cope with crises anger hunger thirst etc according to one mystic the secret of life is to speak little eat little and sleep little all these disciplines are exercised during the month of ramadan it encourages prayers alms giving the doing of other good deeds the doing of other good deeds and refraining from evil giving one power to overcome all evils in islam alms giving and care for the destitute is so highly emphasized 
that it becomes part of a Muslim's daily life. However, when it comes to Ramadan, the month of fasting, Muslims are required to redouble their efforts in this field. Ramadan liberates the spirit to detach itself from worldly pursuits, to seek a healthy living relationship and communion with God Almighty, thereby increasing one's faith. As great emphasis is placed on reciting the Holy Quran, it can be a wonderful source of guidance and revelation or communion with God. Fasting also encourages the growth of grace, forbearance, fortitude, humility, simplicity, and sacrifice. The month of Ramadan is a period of intensive training in beneficent values. Abstention from food and drink and conjugal relations for a certain number of hours each day through a month is a valuable exercise in endurance and steadfastness. A fasting person experiences the pangs of hunger in his stomach for a full month and comes to know particularly the agonies of the poor in the society. This urges him to help the poor wholeheartedly, having personally experienced their plight to a degree. Fasting makes man to realize the importance of food and water, to appreciate these blessings of God Almighty, and to avoid wasting water and food. It, uh, it restores one's health. Some doctors have developed a system of health through almost exclusive use of fasting. It cures addiction to alcoholism, drugs, smoking, which are all injurious to one's health. Fasting is also very beneficial for improving human immune system. And by chance, today is the world uh, tobacco day to quit tobacco and smoking. So I think the fasting is also very helpful for quitting the, the smoking. So it gives a person uh, 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 the, the, the strength to, to stop any kind of addiction. Taking breakfast at an old time before dawn seems to be a bit difficult in the beginning. However, this practice trains one who fast to adapt to the old circumstances when in crisis he ha may have to take food at irregular times along with other irregularities in the normal course of life. One who fasts abstains from even lawful things during Ramadan for the player of God the Almighty. So it becomes easy for him to, to shun unlawful acts for the sake of God Almighty. Fasting also encourages believers to become the true well-wishers of humanity. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community writes, he says, if at all you desire that God in heaven be pleased with you, hasten to become one amongst yourself, as thou you were brothers born of the same mother. Fasting also encourages believers to ponder over the attributes of true believers and demonstrate those values in their daily life. One of those attributes is that they spread peace on earth and never harm anyone. The Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, a Muslim is someone from whose hand and tongue others are safe. So that is one of the true attributes uh, that is one of the attributes of a true believer. So if a Muslim harms anyone during Ramadan, he shouldn't be harming anyone in the normal life. But if we talk particularly about in the perspective of Ramadan, so he is negating the true concept of a believer. Moreover, the fast teaches that for the achievement of high targets, one has to put in tremendous and sincere efforts. I would like to conclude with a sermon 
of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, about fasting during Ramadan, he said, O people, a great month has appeared upon you, a month of blessings in which there is the Laylatul Qadr, night of decrees, which is better than a thousand months. Fasting during the month is obligatory from God, and nightly prayers are voluntary. Anyone who partakes of a good deed in it is like the one who discharges an obligatory ritual in other months. Anyone who discharges an obligatory article in this month is like the one who discharges 70 of them in other months. This was a month of patience, and patience has its reward in paradise. This was a month of reconciliation, and a month in which a believer's wealth was enhanced. Anyone who fed a fasting person at the time of his breaking fast will have his sins remitted, will be shielded from fire, and will earn a reward equivalent to that earned by the person who fasted without the latter suffering any decrease. The earlier part of the month was mercy, its middle is forgiveness from sins, and the last portion was to seek refuge from hellfire. Anyone who lightened the work of his servants in this month will have his sins forgiven by God and will find himself saved from fire. Thank you very much for your kind attention. God bless you abundantly. We are very delighted to have with us His Excellency Mark Shapiro. Mark Shapiro, a career member of the United States Foreign Office, began, began serving as uh, Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Malta in July 2017. Prior, prior to arriving in Malta, he served as Director of Turkey, Greece, Cyprus at, at the National Security Council from 2015 to 2016. Much of his career has focused on the, um, on the Middle East, North Africa, and Southern Europe. Mark has completed overseas tours in Damascus, Rome, Baghdad, Mosul, Lyon, in addition to advanced Arabic language training in Tunis. Mark speaks English, Arabic, French, and Italian. He is joined in Malta by his wife, Sarah, a curator and a writer specialized in contemporary art and photography. Mark has experienced closely the Islamic culture in different Muslim countries. So tonight, his contribution to this iftar will be very interesting and enlightening. I would like to request for him the closing, uh, for, for closing speech. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, and thank you very much to Atif and the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat here in Malta for their warm welcome when I visited them recently. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting my wife and me uh, to break the fast with you this evening. We're roughly halfway through Ramadan now. From my experience living and working across the Middle East and North Africa, that means that now in the second Ashura, you're more or less used to the rhythm. It is not easy to do business in the Muslim world in the afternoons of the first week of Ramadan, I can assure you. Still, everyone in this room, you have all listened to plenty of speeches in your lives, and I think they all have one thing in common. You never said, gee, I wish he spoke longer. <laughs> Particularly as I am now the only thing separating many of you from breaking the fast, I ask for your sympathy and understanding. I would like to take a moment to salute your message and your disciplined efforts to promote openness, tolerance, and interfaith dialogue. Love for all, hatred for none. It's so simple and so powerful. We know this, right? So why is it so hard for us to achieve an end to war? And it is particularly admirable to stay firmly committed to this message, to love, to openness, in the face of the significant persecution the Ahmadiyya community has faced in its brief history. Now I say brief, 1889, nearly 130 years ago, that's a long time for us Americans. 
but alongside other religions, countries, and cultures of the world whose histories go back thousands of years, we're both relatively young. And I note that the Ahmadiyya movement is one of the fastest growing religions in the world today. So thank you for this message. Indeed, what unites us, what we share, is far stronger than what divides us. It seems so often in our world today that we have to keep repeating this message, that we have to teach and reteach the value of tolerance and mutual respect. Sometimes it feels like nobody's listening. In America, our commitment to freedom of religion is sacred, but at the same time, we acknowledge in the first lines of our Constitution that we are forever in pursuit of a more perfect union. In other words, we always have more work to do. And tolerance and progress are never linear either. We may never get to that perfect union, that platonic ideal, but we are committed to working for it and to repeating messages of tolerance, community, humanity, and love alongside friends and partners like you who share these same values. Along the way, we all have to stay focused on the message and ignore the noise, which is quite a challenge as we live in the very noisy and distracting social media era. We are proud of the Muslim community in America. There are at least three and a half million Muslims in the United States. It is really hard to count because the community is so wildly diverse. You name it any branch of Islam, any sect, any nationality, we've got them. Although you have tens of millions of Ahmadiyya in the world, we are proud to be home to at least 20,000, maybe more. Here in Malta, we do the best we can at our mission to mirror the work we do at home, to encourage respect for minorities, human rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom to be whoever you want to be. What we share is far stronger than what divides us. After my recent discussion with Atif, I thought about Joseph Campbell and his book, The Power of Myth. This is something that my father shared with me when I was growing up, and I loved it, because he wrote about common stories, roles, lessons that ran through many cultures and religions around the world. The hero, the teacher, the prophet, hubris, fate, and so on. And I cannot count how many iftars I have attended across Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, France, and more. But what I love about the experience is that you give me the chance to focus on these basic elements that bring us together. The community, sharing, food, breaking the fast. What are the basic needs that everyone has on this planet? maybe doing laundry too, and looking inside ourselves to purify our bodies and our souls as you do during Ramadan, to make the world a better place by making ourselves better people, all through love, as you say. Thank you once again for giving us the honor of sharing this iftar with you, wishing you all peace, love, and health for you and your families this month and for the year ahead. And with apologies for speaking Arabic and not Urdu, Sahaf Turkum.